This is One on One. We are pleased to welcome Wendy Oxenhorn, Executive Director, Jazz Foundation of America. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Great. Uh, this organization does what? For whom? Okay. Um, you know, if you think of the world without music, it would be devastating. I think um, there isn't one person alive who music has not allowed them to not commit suicide <laughs> after a divorce, um, celebrate their marriages and their relationships and their lives. So um, we are the folks that take care of the musicians when things happen to them, because this is an unusual population of people. These what are. These are folks that um, were independent, never would think of taking help from anyone their whole lives. They came up at a time when the opportunities were different. And these are folks that made it on their own. They were the kings and queens traveling through Europe. Uh, they were famous and revered. And they found a really interesting way to, to be in the world, especially people of color. So um, this is uh, someone who, at a later time in their life, when the phone stops ringing and you're too old or too ill to tour. You never went to doctors. You never got paid properly. Um, for instance, when you uh, did um, a, a, a record with Frank Sinatra, you'd get $300. You'd be thrilled. You'd with pay Sinatra. your rent. They right. perform a Sinatra, they get $300. You get a $300, say, you know, to record. And then um, Sinatra would get the royalties when the album sold. And then when CDs were invented, there was nothing that covered that, so you didn't get anything on that. So wow. you'd get these one-time little buyouts, or when you'd go and perform yeah. places, there's no health insurance, there's nothing to cover you. So later in life, you end up in a pretty rough way. So what do you do for them, some of the specific programs? Okay. Um, first of all, if someone is sick or ill or, um, you know, something happens and... Uh, we, I'll, I'll give you a quick story. We had this great guy, um, Jimmy Norman, who co-wrote Time Is On My Side, the, the tune that made the Rolling Stones sure. famous. He had had um, a triple bypass. He couldn't tour with the coasters. He had been with the coasters for 30 years. He never got a dime for that tune because he didn't get the publishing rights. So here is someone who was about to be evicted. Um, it was heartbreaking. I went to court with him. And we convinced the landlord's attorney that this guy is a national treasure. He was also the guy who first produced Bob Marley. Bob Marley wanted to be an R&B star. Wow. And he told him, go back to your roots. So this was an important historical figure. We ended up, um, wonderful things happened for him. The landlord didn't press charges. He excused him from the two years back rent. Um, we, in cleaning up his apartment, we found him and Bob Marley recording on a, a cassette in his place in the 70s, tunes that were never before heard. And uh, it ended up selling at Christie's. And so he got himself an editing suite. Wow. He paid his back rent. Life was beautiful. He got an article in the New York Times acknowledging who he was. Oh, Judy Collins. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. But that's because of the work that your organization did to help him. Well, well but of course, because of you know, what his he work, did in the world. Art. Yeah, we were, we were fortunate enough to be able to, to serve. It was an honor. But um, the best part was uh, Judy Collins picked up his version of Time is on My Side, put it on her label, and with all this, the New York Times, everything, uh, you know what he got out of the whole deal? A $60 a night weekly gig at a steakhouse. But it kept him alive for years because he now had somewhere to go. Wow. It was really beautiful, but that's an example of what we do. So in someone like that, who we didn't find a cassette of him and Bob Marley playing, and they were about to be evicted, we would pay the rent. We why would get their groceries. Why do you, Wendy, have passion, so much passion for these artists? Um, I think because music has uh, been there throughout my whole life. It, it's everything that ever motivated me and was beautiful in this world. I, I started as a ballerina. Yes. Very and, accomplished ballerina. And um, I had a terrible injury. It was devastating. And uh, I called the suicide hotline. And the woman on the other end, because I thought life was over, she started counseling me and um, 
halfway through, I guess I asked her how she was doing, and she started telling me that her husband just left her for a 25-year-old. So I started counseling her, and three days later, I was working at the suicide hotline. And it was the most wonderful thing that could have happened because instead of worrying about my own troubles, I started worrying about other people's. And fast forward later, I had another incident that um, was devastating. And instead, I, I decided to pick up the harmonica. I love the blues. I always love the blues. And what I was going to say is music has always been there. You know, that's what took me through. Any time anything terrible happens, you put on your wow. music and you're, you're okay. That's true. So it is true. So um, I became, I started playing blues harp in the train stations with this great old man from Mississippi. But you know how the universe works. It always prepares you for the next thing. And I had no idea, but it ended up preparing me for this job. So, you're making a difference every day with what you're doing. Yeah. And um, a lot of people are benefiting. Wendy well, it's a lot Oxenhorn, of people that, that um, make this executive happen. director of the Jazz Foundation of America. And, and of course, a true to your personality, I can tell you just immediately under your breath said a lot of other people are helping, so you don't want the credit yourself. I thank you for joining us, Wendy, sure. and wish you and your colleagues nothing but the best at the foundation thank you. as you continue to help these extraordinary musicians and artists. Thanks so Thank you much. so much. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Bartley Healthcare, Felician University, Valley National Bank, ShopRite Supermarkets, Adler Aphasia Center, Gary's Wine and Marketplace, and by Josh S. Weston. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.